With this workflow, you can find the latest or most engaged content on Reddit and process it to become social media posts on LinkedIn, Twitter, and back onto Reddit, all automatically allowing you to create engagement across your social media accounts. All right, and let's go ahead and take a look at what happens on the back end. So here is what we got. It went ahead and it grabbed me 20 articles and it gives me the article title, it gives me the article link, the date that this got added to my list here. And then um, it wrote one tweet, one LinkedIn post, and then a uh, Reddit comment. So either I can put that in the, uh, the top when I post my, my, my post to Reddit or I can add it as my first comment into the, uh, the post as well. So it did exactly what I wanted to, wonderful. And as always, you can download this N8N workflow for free from my free school community where we give away over 25 different business-focused workflows for free with new free workflows coming out every week, along with tutorial videos, how-to setup guides, and a community of automation-focused business owners all looking to collaborate and grow their businesses with AI-powered automations. You can also join our advanced community for tech support assistance, marketing and business growth discussions, as well as getting to pick my brain on N8N, AI automation, or businesses in general. Now, let's go ahead and go and show you how this will work. Um, if you have not yet set up your Reddit credentials and built your Reddit app, please check out the link in the description below. I walk through that for you in another video. But what I've done here is I've set up a schedule trigger. You can set this up however you want. Um, if you're the kind of person who just wants to click the test workflow button when you feel like it to post things, you know, by all means. Um, but I have this set to schedule, I think it's once a day. Uh, yeah, once a day, 10 a.m. So at 10 a.m. it's gonna go into Reddit and I can pick which subreddit. I currently have it set to technology just for testing purposes. And I'm using a Git mini operation from the subreddit of technology. I'm limiting it to 20 articles. And it's gonna go ahead and give me 20 articles that, and it's currently set to the top posts. So you, I don't even, it's set to that even though it doesn't show. Uh, it's the top posts. It's gonna go get the, the top rated, so the ones with the most upvotes, and it's gonna return those. I then add those to a Google Sheets document. So over here, I've got this uh, Reddit bot info Google Sheet where I'm gonna dump all this information into just to be able to hold it for purposes. Um, maybe uh, there's another article in here I want to use as well for another reason. Um, but really, it's just, just to have it set somewhere that I can access it again in this workflow. Um, if I need to for some reason. Um, you don't have to, you can run straight through and just have it put out a, um, a tweet, a LinkedIn post and a, a Reddit comment. Uh, but I, I always like to store data because you never know when you can go back and use these things over again. Anyway, the Google Sheets note, it's just an append or update. Um, so if for some reason it finds the same article with the same title in it, it's just gonna rewrite it with a new date. It's not gonna change it. Um, it's not gonna overwrite anything. But it, if if you have this big list and you've been doing this for days, it's gonna keep putting it all of their new runs on the bottom. All right, so you just have to scroll down for those. Um, I have it in a sheet called archived articles, just archived articles there. And then we're just putting the article title, the article link, as well as the date added, and that would be today's date that way you know when this was. And if you want, you can go in and add some extra time uh, variables, maybe change this to a now instead of a today, and then add in the time. So it adds, you know, uh, 10 hundred hours or 1300 hours or whatever, uh, just so you can keep track of when these things are coming in. Maybe you, you're doing this for scraping purposes to be able to see trends in the market, um, what have you, like that's, Personally, I, I love having data. And the more data I can have and check out uh, to see what's going on kind of as at a macro level, the better. So that's why we have this Google Sheets node here. Um, we then run it through this AI agent. And this AI agent will look at each and every single one of these articles. And its job is to determine whether or not the article is interesting based on a pre-chosen um, topic. And so it says here, current topic, AI, artificial intelligence, change that to make it your niche, to make it your genre, to make it whatever it is that you need to be focusing on in order to grow your brand or the type of content that you're putting out. All right, so um, I'm having it look for articles that are in the AI space. And what this guy does is really all it, it, it's meant to do is determine whether the article seems interesting in relation to my topic. 
So if for some reason uh, a new cooking app came up, cooking apps aren't really necessarily related to AI unless it's baked in with AI. Uh, but like if it's just about cooking, it's, it's going to come back with a false. And I, I don't want articles that aren't related to my niche. So this guy goes through, he's going to look at all of the titles for the articles. Fairly soon, that's all we give him. Yeah, just the title. And then it's going to go ahead and just going to read it quickly. It's going to determine if it relates to the topic. And then it's going to output either true or false. And it's got an output parser here. So either true or false. And that's a Boolean because it doesn't have the, uh, the quotes around it. If it had quotes, it'd be a string. All right. So then it comes to an if node. The if node sorts the ones that are interesting down the interesting branch. And it sorts the ones that are not interesting down the not interesting branch. And the ones that are not interesting, we just leave them. They don't, nothing happens with them. The ones that are interesting, we come up here to this scrape website HTTP node. And we're running it through a service called, um, it's a free service called Gina, but we're running it through their, uh, their endpoint HTTPS colon slash slash r dot Gina dot AI. And then the article link. And you'll actually notice over here, this one says error. And so if we come over to the table, um, we'll see that some of the articles didn't actually pull. They gave us errors. And um, probably because they don't want bots scraping their website. But in other articles, we did get the data. We got all the information from the website. It pulled that one. No problem. We got another one. Is this another Axos? Yep, Axos. So they gave us an error. Here's another one, Axos. Um, okay. Another one, this one's Gizmodo. So you may not be able to get every single article. Um, it's faster than doing it by hand, but here's another article it did get. And there's another one it got. And another one should be coming up. There's another article. All right, and so it'll pull most of your articles. Um, and it, what it do, this service does, here's another error. What this service does is it um, uses AI to process what's on the site, and it gives you back information that is readable by our AI agents. So um, I, I always run, whenever I do any sort of web scraping using N8N, I run it through this service, and it comes back with AI readable content rather than just this big block of HTML that might just go on and on forever, which is too many tokens. Instead, what I do is I have it run through this, have them have any errors that might pop up rather than have it in my workflow. So then it passes these articles over. It says it's passing 10, but really it was probably only maybe about five or six. All right, and here we see that again, the data is undefined. That's because it came up with the error. Uh, but if I come over to my table and I scroll down, let's we'll keep an eye over here on the right. You'll see that when I get to an article that does have data, it does show it properly just like that. All right, and so it does get me a few articles out of the ones that it identified. It gives me all of that information that's being fed into the model here. Here's another one. All right, wonderful. Now, how does this guy actually work? Let's go take a look. So we have a system prompt here, and his goal is to take the title, uh, the topic that we give him, we're gonna give it to him here. So this is configurable to your uh, niche, your topic the details of the article, which would be the, the content of the web page, and then the link as well. So we get the link. And then its job is to go through all of the data in the article and to identify the title, the topic, and the main details, as well as to um, figure out um, kind of a breakdown of what this, this article is really all about. So we're having it read all of these articles kind of in mass to be able to give us the information of, is this a good article or not for our purposes? And so the stronger that you make uh, your, your focus, the stronger that this is gonna be. And so again, there, it's here and there's here. You don't wanna update in those two places. All right, and so it's gonna output information. It's gonna give us the title, the topic, the details of the article, as well as the link. And that gets passed on to the next agent. So uh, once all the articles have gone through that process, we aggregate it all together, and then we send it to three different agents. One that's gonna make a Twitter post for us, one that's gonna make a LinkedIn post for us, and then one that's gonna make our Reddit, what I call the first comment. So either you can put it in the, the text of your Reddit post, or you can just make it in the first comment, and now it's OP making a comment, right? 
Um, so it depends on if you want post comma and Carmen comma. All right. So for the Twitter post, it gets all of that information from the web page. And so for the ones, oh, I forgot to mention the ones that don't come through because they're they're busted because there's no data here. Um, it is instructed. Uh, where is that? Right here. So if the article data is missing or empty, um, just go ahead and output do not use this article because it doesn't have the data in the processing. I don't want it hallucinating what this article is about and then you posting it and then people are going, hey, that's not what this article is all about. All right. So um, at the end, it, I think we got what? One, two, three, four of the 10 articles were actually readable by uh, um, Gina. And it gave, so it had four choices out of the 20. So that, you know, you might want to increase this up to like 30 or 40, depending. Just understand that you're gonna have to run all of those through this agent first. So every single one of those agents gets run, uh, articles gets run through this guy who sees the headline. So you're gonna be making 40 calls if you do set it to a, a limit of 40. And it's gonna make an interesting or not interesting determination on each. And then those get processed through here, depending on how many are considered interesting. And so uh, you do want to be careful because Gina might, you know, block your IP if you send too many requests to it as well. And it is a free service. I never had to sign up for anything for it. I just include that that header onto uh, my URL, and it, it works. Um, otherwise, we get you know, you know, forty percent of the articles come through. And then these guys, what they do is their job is to pick. The article out of what came through that is the most relevant, the most interesting, the most topical based on your niche. And I do have a whole bunch of uh, placeholder values in here. So you're going to want to put in your name or the company's name, the persona that's discussing this. You're going to give a brief description of the persona. Um, and then uh, you want to, I think there's a place for... Um, the topic as well. And I guess that goes into your brief description. So it's gonna read through, you change your persona name there too, and persona name there. Um, it's gonna read through all of this that comes in. It's gonna determine which of those articles is the most topical, the easiest to make a decent post about with Twitter, LinkedIn, and um, Reddit. And then it's gonna write it. So let's come down here for Reddit. It made one, here's my article title. And it gives me uh, my Reddit comments. So Kevin Systrom's, excuse me, critique really shines a light on a growing tension in AI development, balancing user engagement with delivering genuine value. And this is all from the article. It's the um, the AI chatbots are juicing engagement instead of being useful. Instagram co-founder warns. And so here, Instagram co-founder Kevin Systrom criticized current AI chatbots for prioritizing juicing engagement. Isn't that funny based on this video I'm making? By repeatedly prompting users with follow-up questions rather than delivering uh, useful insights. So not about what I'm talking about. All right, good. So it, each of these three, one makes a Twitter post and you'll see in here it says it needs to make a uh, uh, brevity and impact suitable for Twitter. Uh, provide a quick, clever reaction that connects the article to current trends or user interests. All right, it's got a uh, chain of thought to come up with how it's gonna do that and some do nots, don't be dry, don't make a summary, don't exceed the character limit, never forget the article link, don't be robotic, that sort of thing. And all, all three of them have that kind of framework. Um, here's LinkedIn, let's go ahead and take a look at it as well. So again, change out the placeholders in here that I have, change your voice, your style of how you want it to sound for you because this LinkedIn, you wanna sound professional, do you are like a little more energy? Are you more subdued? I mean, it depends on who you are. Do you want a call to action or not? If so, you would want to update this section here to let it know what the call to action should be. And it's going to output two things, the article title and the LinkedIn post. And again, chain of thought, what not to do and some examples. And then for Twitter, we have the exact same thing over here. We have um, you know, placeholders. You'll wanna come here to adjust the subreddits that you want this potentially written for. Um, and I say that because some subreddit communities, they, they want you to frame things differently. Some communities want you to just post the article and don't include anything else. So that's why you need a comment. Uh, some want your comment in the post with the article to give it context. And so you kind of have to, to massage this one just a little bit 
um, in order to let it know what it, it might need to know. Um, and so we, we tell it the subreddits that you might be posting in, and this is for internal context only. When I didn't have that command in there, it would say, hey, slash r, tech, or r slash technology, are you guys interested in this article? I'm like, no, no, stop doing that. Um, and then change your voice as well. And then it creates an insightful or thought-provoking reaction to the article. It needs to stay brief. Um, no mentions to the, the community, the, the subreddit or the audience. Just make it a comment. Uh, try to be smart or humorous question, possibly to make engagement. Um, and then it outputs the article title and the Reddit comment as well. And here's the chain of thought and what not to do. And then our examples. All right. And so then after it makes each of these, it then uploads it to one of these uh, Google Sheets nodes. And they're exactly the same. So I'm only going to show you one. Uh, here's the Reddit one. This one uh, takes the article title that we got from our output, from the model we just did. It matches it to the article title over here in our spreadsheet, just like this. And then it um, puts in the Reddit comment. The LinkedIn one is gonna put in the LinkedIn post. I'll show you that. So right here, it puts in the LinkedIn post. And this one puts in our tweet. And that is the high value article finder. Now I will say the kind of the bigger pain in the butt with this thing is um, that some of these articles don't come back. And it's because the websites have blocked bots. They really, really don't want bots just scraping their articles and then using it rather than um, linking to the article. They want people linking to the article. Well, here I am trying to link to the article and I can't do it because they don't want bots that are just gonna copy and paste the article somewhere else. So um, just be aware that you might need to adjust the limit on the Reddit node. Um, try different subreddits. You could try doing a couple different calls, maybe duplicate this Reddit node here and then have the trigger activate all of them. Do some sort of merge node that then goes into your Google Sheets um, to then get from different subreddits. That way, each time it pulls, there's the possibility that you're going to get a decent article rather than just trying one subreddit. Um, especially if you're, if you're targeting smaller communities, uh, this technology is one of the bigger ones. And so I can be guaranteed that every day at 10 a.m., it's gonna be a completely different list of articles. But if you try a smaller subreddit, uh, maybe not. You might get some duplicates. And if you get duplicates, then there's the chance that the bot will pick the same duplicate over and over again and create issues for you. So as you can see, the high value article finder allows you to quickly find articles on Reddit that are making a splash. Or if you want, you can target the ones that are new and then find a way to post into them in order to build, build up your comment karma on Reddit or pretty much anything else you wanna do in order to make it look like you are an authority in your subject by creating these social media posts for you on different platforms. Uh, soon enough, I'm going to be getting the uh, the Facebook and Instagram uh, APIs working. So I'm going to be able to uh, show you how to integrate that as well. If you're interested in learning more about that, please check out my free school community. The link is down in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like and share the video. It really does help get this information out there to those who need it, who want these workflows to be able to build up their businesses and like... Uh, for me, it's a matter of saving time. I really do enjoy being able to just push a button and now I've got all of that work done that used to take me 20, 30, 40 minutes. It's done in two minutes. I just post it. I'm able to go off and spend more time with my family. So please try to share this if you can because I'm sure there's somebody out there who could use that assistance too. As always, I'm Bradford Carlton. Let's automate your success together.